Hi, and thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is Feeling Colors, investigating cross-modal correspondences between 3D shapes, colors, and emotions. My name is Osama Mitatla, and my co-authors are Anna Lin, Meika Scheller, Fong Fong, and Michael Brooks. Uh, we're from the Department of Computer Science at the University of Bristol and the Department of Psychology at the University of Bath in the UK. So in this paper, we show evidence for cross-modal correspondences between tangible objects, visual color, and emotions. We ask people to feel 3D printed uh, shapes and to assign a color and an emotion to their tangible experience. The work is grounded in cross-modal correspondences. Uh, these are non-arbitrary perceptual associations between sensory stimuli. Uh, they've been extensively studied in areas such as cognitive science or experimental psychology, and uh, numerous examples of cross-modal interactions have been documented. We know, for example, that people often tend to associate larger objects uh, with lower pitch sounds and smaller objects with higher pitch sounds. This particular cross-modal correspondence could have arise from natural correlations of physical properties. For example, that larger objects resonate at the lower frequency and vice versa. Uh, but there are other types of cross-modal correspondences that um, are more abstract and they cannot um, easily be explained by physical properties. You can try this out for, for yourself uh, right now. If I was to show you these two shapes on the screen, one angular uh, and jacked shape, like a shattered piece of shattered glass. Another one is round, uh, like a cloud. And then I gave you two random labels, Booba and Kiki, and asked you to assign one label to each shape. Uh, which one would you assign to it? So the majority of people would assign the label Kiki to the jacked shape and the label Booba to the round shape. And this is a, a famous um, visual linguistic uh, cross-model correspondence that actually have been shown to hold across a range of um, age groups, cultures, and so on. So why is this uh, relevant? <clears throat> in short, because in HCI, we're interested in multisensory interaction. And it's, uh, it's not only increasingly feasible to, uh, to incorporate more and more sensory modalities at the user interface, at the user experiences, um, but it can also be more beneficial to do so. Uh, for example, we can improve immersion or engagement or accessibility. What cross-modal correspondences tells us is that we ought to be uh, careful and mindful of cross-modal effects because the way we perceive and interpret information uh, from one sense can be influenced uh, by information coming from another sense. So in this paper, we wanted to look at the question of whether there are cross-modal correspondences between 3D shapes, color uh, and emotions, independently of vision, uh, whether uh, the way we feel objects, tangible objects, combine with color and influence our emotional judgments. So we started off from the Booba Kiki paradigm with 3D printed Booba like and Kiki like shapes. And we varied them uh, in terms of level of angularity and complexity. So we operationalize this in terms of the number of protruding points on the surface of the 3D printed object. Uh, we recruited the 30 participants. We hid the objects away in a box and um, uh, so they couldn't see them and asked them to feel the objects and then choose color from a palette of, of colors and also adjust brightness and also to assign an emotion in terms of an answer to the question feeling these objects give me a sense of, and then choosing a term uh, that captures the pleasure, arousal, and dominance emotion model. What did we find? Um, uh, in terms of colors, we found that rounder objects and less complex objects tend to be associated with higher brightness and the, uh, the color blue, and angular objects and more complex objects tend to be associated with lower brightness and the color red. In terms of emotion, we found that rounder and less or complex objects tend to be associated with high levels of pleasure, lower levels of arousal, and more of a sense of being in control. Whereas angular and more complex objects were most often associated with lower levels of pleasure, high levels of arousal, and more of a sense of being dominated or having a lack of control. Importantly, these findings contrast those reported from similar studies do done with 2D shapes or 2D images. So this means that designers cannot simply uh, extrapolate um, uh, uh, potential perceptual interpretive experiences that are elicited by 2D images to seemingly similar 3D uh, tangible objects. So other principles are at play and direct exploration can lead to undesirable outcomes. Uh, we extracted four uh, association strategies using thematic analysis. One that often uh, refers to geometric features explicitly, another that refers to familiar objects and familiar experiences, a third that relates to the personal sense of aesthetics or pleasantness, and a final one that looks at the coherence of choice within the boundaries of the experimental procedure itself. So uh, based on these findings, we articulated the design space in the paper uh, to help create um, tangible multi-sensory artifacts that can trigger specific emotional percepts. 
uh, and with this we can we think can help provide concrete actionable recommendations on how to exploit cross-model correspondences in, in, in HCI. That's it. Thank you.